The disaster on Mount Eager is one of mountaineering's most infamous tragedies. Mount Eager stands at 3,967 metres tall and is located in the Bernese Alps of Switzerland, overlooking Grindelwald. At the time, the north face of the mountain had never been climbed from bottom to top, and in 1936, a 10-man team, who were backed by the Nazi party, believed that they had what it took to be the first to do so. They were wrong. The north face of the mountain was notoriously treacherous, with many people dying in the past trying to be the first to reach the summit. The team were all from either Austria or Germany, and were all very experienced mountaineers. Leading the team was Tony Kurz, who, at the time, was one of the best mountaineers on the planet. Before they even made attempts at the summit, one of the team died in a training accident. Bad luck continued and the weather worsened, so multiple members of the team decided to drop out. Andreas Hinterstrosser, Tony Kurz, Willy Angara, and Eddie Rayner were the only ones left. After the weather improved, the four began to scale the mountain. Hint Estrosa ended up falling 37 meters on the first day, but decided to continue anyway. On the second day, the weather worsened once more, and the party were hit by many rock falls. Angara was hit in the shoulder by a piece of rock, and despite being hurt, he decided to continue the climb. Towards the end of the second day, the weather was still bad, and Angara's shoulder was getting worse. The group then had to negotiate the Hinterstrosser Traverse, a particularly technical and difficult section of the cliff. They realised that they couldn't do it and decided to abseil down one by one. Hinterstrosser was rigging the ropes for the final part of the descent and had unclipped his harness from the group's line. When he did this, an avalanche swept down the mountain, hurling him all the way off the cliff to the bottom. He died instantly and was not discovered for several days. The avalanche also caused Angara to crash into the wall, hitting his head. He then died on impact. Rayner, who was belaying the two, was dragged against the wall by the weight of the ropes and died by suffocation minutes later, leaving only Kurz alive, trapped and hanging on the rope with his dead comrades. The local mountain guys realised something was wrong and at the end of the third day, they dispatched a rescue party. They got within shouting distance of Kurz and found out what had happened to his friends, but due to bad weather, they had to turn back. They had to leave Kurz hanging there and freezing. The next day they returned, but still couldn't get to him. At this point, Kurz was on the brink of dying. One of his arms had completely frozen, which made the rescuer's job even harder. He began to lose consciousness and when he realised his time was done, he said to the guides, I can't go anymore. Not much long after, Kurz passed away. His body wasn't recovered until a few weeks later, when a German climbing team recovered his body. 